Tony Hawk's Underground turns 20 this year. This game was one of my favorites growing up, and it still is. It's been a huge influence on me. In terms of gameplay, it took everything I loved about the Pro Skater series and added storytelling to it. I love this game, but tragically, there's no really convenient and legitimate way to play it right now. It's never had a remaster on a modern console. The original Pro Skater games got a full-on remake in Unreal Engine a few years back, and they look awesome. I'd love to get a taste of how Tony Hawk's Underground would look with that treatment. But seeing as the original developer of this game, Neversoft, was absorbed into Infinity Word of Call of Duty fame, and the dev of the aforementioned Pro Skater remake was absorbed into Blizzard, and for some various other reasons too, uh, I think the chances are pretty slim we're ever going to get an Underground remake. However, I do know that fan remasters can happen, I've seen it on YouTube. So, I guess I'll have to do it myself. As a proof of concept, I wanted to start with the first level in the game, New Jersey. But how do I get it into Unreal Engine? I could remake the map from scratch, I guess, but that's a lot of work. I wanted to use the original map as a starting point and build off of it. And that means being able to somehow access the game files and bring them into a modern game engine. When I first got this idea, I wasn't even sure if it'd be possible. But after doing a bit of research, I found there's a small but passionate modding community that's made tools to work with some of the files for the Tony Hawk games. A lot of this stuff is from the early 2010s, so I had to do a little bit of digging on old forum posts and stuff like that to find what I needed, some sketchy links. There's this thing called Pre-Tool that lets me decompile bundles of assets from the PC version of the game. After a bit of digging and trial and error, I eventually did find the New Jersey map file. But of course, it's in some weird format that's specific to this game in particular. I needed to be able to convert it into, you know, a file like an OBJ or an FBX, something that can be brought into Unreal. Turns out, there's another tool called IOTHPS Scene, and this one's a Blender add-on. Blender is a free 3D modeling software if you're unaware. And after some trial and error, I got the level into Blender. And it looked exactly like it did in 2003. The geometry was completely all there, which is great. The textures were even mostly there. I was in business. Now all I needed to do was hit that export button and bring it into Unreal, right? Well, yes and no. When I tried this for the first time, while the geometry came into Unreal perfectly, the textures didn't carry over at all. All of the materials were blank, and to get them to carry over from Blender to Unreal, I would have to modify all 1000 something of them, which is not happening. So I hacked together this Blender Python script that modified all the materials for me. Now I'm glossing over this here because this took a few tries. But eventually, I got all those materials simplified and, after many, many attempts, this is New Jersey in Unreal Engine. Now it's not perfect. There's a lot of distorted and missing textures, but look at this. This is a great starting point. I dropped the default third person controller into the scene, and after setting the collision to complex instead of simple, I was honestly shocked. I was running around the first level of Underground in Unreal Engine, and for the first time in this project, this is starting to feel like it's going somewhere. So I had the New Jersey map in the new engine. Now it was time to make it start looking next gen. Or more like next, next, next gen? Easier said than done, that's for sure. But honestly, just bringing the map into Unreal does a lot to make it look more modern. With all of Unreal's crazy global illumination and ray tracing tech doing the heavy lifting there. But there was still an insane amount of work to do. The first thing I had to do was a good cleanup pass. I went through the map and started deleting anything that didn't have to be there. There was a lot of geometry for fake shadows I noticed, which we didn't need anymore because now we're in a modern engine. Now we can have actual shadows that are calculated in real time. 
I also started replacing really low quality assets with modern ones, especially ones that I think people would actually notice. Like this tree or shrubs. None of this stuff you'd see in a modern game, so it all had to be replaced. I found a lot of free models on Sketchfab which helped me out here. Now, using Unreal gives you access to something really cool called Quixel Mega Scans, which was actually a great resource for models like trees as well as really high quality materials. And speaking of materials, pretty much every texture in the scene had to be replaced in some capacity. This was a huge job and took days. Many of the old textures were generic enough that they could be replaced with modern physically based materials which are not only higher resolution, but they react with light in a realistic way, just adding another layer of modernness. For some of the more unique ones that I had trouble finding a direct replacement for, I'd either remake them from scratch, or run the original through an AI upscaler just to make the quality look a little more palatable and modern. Now this isn't an ideal solution, I tried to replace or recreate as much as I could, but in a pinch, this AI stuff is pretty effective sometimes. And since there weren't any normal maps in the original game, I generated some where I thought it would be appropriate. I also tried to add some more detail and geometry that wasn't really there before, so I went around and added new models for things like windows, doors, and little touches around the map. Like puddles, lots of puddles. Puddles are next gen. When I was playing the Pro Skater remake, I noticed the Venice Beach level takes place at sunset now instead of the middle of the day. Also check out these puddles. Told ya. Anyway, I thought sunset was a good idea, so I copied that for my level. I don't think it looks completely upgraded, but it's definitely an improvement, that's for sure. But at this point, I was pretty eager to move on to characters, so that's what I started working on next. Something that sets Underground apart from the earliest titles in the Pro Skater series is all of the characters in the world. In the original games, the only character is the skater that you choose. But by the time they got to Underground, there's characters in cutscenes, NPCs roaming the map, and there's even characters that give you missions, which are known as goals. Now, I had a choice to make. Do I use the original models for these characters? Maybe soup them up a little bit? Or do I go for some hyper-realistic modern look-alikes made with Unreal's MetaHuman? Maybe I'll give MetaHuman a shot later, but for now I just wanted to get the original characters in there. Hey, if it's good enough for Rockstar, it's good enough for me. I guess. I knew that I was going to want to create at least the first mission from the game which happens to be given to the player by the infamous Eric Sparrow. So that's the first character I looked into getting into here. Before I realized I could rip Eric from the game's files using tools that I already had, I had found this version of the character someone made for Gary's mod. I converted it, put it into Unreal, and yeah, looks a lot more low poly than I remembered. Turns out I was right, I managed to rip the Eric model once I realized I could do that, and it looked a lot better. And after a few horrifying missteps, I got Eric rigged using the Mixamo auto rigger, got him into Unreal Engine, and it's looking pretty good. I also upscaled his textures using that AI tool, and I think that helped modernize him a little bit, maybe? Then I added a blend shape back in Blender so that way I can flap his jaw and make him talk. The name's Eric Sparrow, and I'm a dick. I went through a similar process to get the drug dealers in there who are a pretty notable group of characters in this level, I think. But other than them, everyone else is pretty much just a generic NPC. After this came a more complicated challenge. What about the skater that the player controls? The main protagonist of Tony Hawk's Underground is a character that you create. So this could be a can of worms. But when I thought back to my memories of playing this game, I think my kid self was too lazy to create an original character most of the time. So I normally played as the default custom skater you're given when you first start a new story. Apparently, his name is Steve. So that's the character I wanted to use for my little proof of concept remake here. But this posed another challenge. The model for this character doesn't actually exist. At least not in one part. Characters like the Pro Skaters, Eric, and some special characters all have specific set model files. 
But Steve, our default custom skater hero, he's just an assortment of options. I'd have to track down all of the custom skater parts and rebuild him from those. So that's what I did. I dug through the game's files, found every item that made up Steve, found the matching textures, and smashed them all together in Blender, rigged them up in Mixamo, and here we go, Steve in Unreal Engine. After a little bit of retargeting, I was able to swap out that default Unreal mannequin with Steve, and we're off to the races, playing as Steve. Slight problem though, he's not skating. And this is a skateboarding video game after all, so... Now, I've tried to make skateboarding video game mechanics before, and let me tell you, it's not as easy as you might think. It especially takes a lot of skill to make a game as smooth as Pro Skater. But, we should be able to get some rough mechanics down here. Skateboarding games are pretty niche, so I wasn't expecting to find a whole lot of reference online. But it turns out, since the last time I tried to make a skateboarding game, someone has put some work into making a skateboarding system for Unreal. So shout out to Code Like Me, I grabbed his project file off his Patreon page, and it feels like a skateboarding game. It doesn't really feel like Pro Skater, that's for sure. I was going to have to modify the hell out of this to make it feel like Underground. I found another asset that was suspiciously similar to Code Like Me's, and that had some additional animations in it, which was helpful. So I combined the best of both, reworked the physics to sort of match the speed and feel of Tony Hawk games, and now we're skating as Steve in New Jersey in Unreal Engine. Hell yeah. Now we need something for the skater to actually do. So I created the first mission in which we retrieve these pieces of Eric's board. I made the collectibles 3D this time, and they do this cool little spin animation. I also put together a little cutscene to introduce the goal using Eric's original dialogue. And I was able to use the mouth flapping blend shape I made before by reading the amplitude of the sound he was producing and then using that to drive the blend shape. The goal triggers when you walk up to Eric, and there we go. I think I've got myself a proof of concept. Let's do a quick run through of the whole thing. Home sweet home, what a dump. At least it has some killer spots. The old pool down by the high school, Scabland, the drainage ditch on the south side of town, and Elm Street, our own little strip of paradise, complete with drug dealers who hate skateboarders. All right, so we can skate around. Uh, of course, we can ollie. If you hold the ollie button, just like in the original game, you jump a little higher. And uh, we can even flip. We can do kick flips and heel flips. And uh, yeah, that's honestly about it for skating. But yeah, we can skate. We can get off our board and run around, which is really fun. Maybe we'll... Just do a quick little walkthrough with some of the areas here. I think this little alleyway turned out really nice. Looks pretty good. Here's Peraltas with, uh, you know, some puddles on the ground, some next gen puddles. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really did go through and upgrade as much of this as I could. And I think it's looking all right. Let's go and try out the mission with Eric. So we just got to walk up to him. Hey, help me out here. I was just skating, minding my own, and the dealers grabbed my board. They tore it apart and they threw the pieces up on the roof. My knee's wrecked. Could you grab them for me? All right, and now we can go and look for those parts. In the original game, it uh, teleports you over there. But, uh, whatever, I didn't think that was that important. And we can see now the parts have appeared on the roof. They're doing their little spinny animation, and we have to go collect them just like in the original game. So I'll jump on this roof. There we go. Uh, I didn't get around to adding climbing, but I think the jump is high enough that we could probably make this work yeah yeah there we go 
And in the original game, you could just clear this jump. Oh, and I missed it. Oh, yeah, got it. All right, and then we'll collect this one. And then just one more. We'll go and grab it and goal complete. We finished the first and only goal in our Tony Hawk remaster here. And I guess we can just appreciate the view a little bit up here. So this is a pretty good start, and I think I'm gonna stop here for now. I'd love to work more on adding some of the skateboarding mechanics the series is known for, as well as things like pedestrians and cars to make the world feel more alive. But hey, I'm just one guy who threw this together in a week to see what it would look like. Imagine what a full team could do to reimagine this game. And as for an official remake, just remember that this series is now owned by a mega corporation. And mega corporations tend to only do things when they'll make a return on their investment. So, if you want to see an official Thug remake, the best thing you can do is let them know there's an audience for it. Share this video and keep the conversation going. Thanks for watching everyone. A huge shout out to all of the modders who made this possible by creating tools that let me use assets from the original game as well as capture footage from the old games in widescreen and HD. There's some really awesome stuff people have made to keep these old games alive. Let me know if you'd like to keep seeing updates on this project, and I'll see you in the next one.